Good morning. Today we're looking at examples out of section 7.6, the normal distribution and extended numeric example. The basic idea of the problem is that lots of things follow a normal curve and or the bell curve, which has this ugly expression to it. And that has to do with grades, size, weight, height. And in a business case, we want to know for our product how much do we need out of each size and how many customers will, will there be. It's an interesting function in that it shows up everywhere but we can't use the fundamental theorem of calculus because we can't find an antiderivative so we have to do numerical integration. There are two approaches. The first approach we're going to use Riemann sums except we're going to do z-scores. That converts every x value to a z value where we subtract the mean, divide by the standard deviation, and then we can use the simpler normalized bell curve, which looks like an easier function to deal with, and the area of the normalized bell curve is 1. All of our problems then become the same Riemann sum problem, it's just we have different starting and ending points that we're going to need to do. The second approach uses specialized functions with Excel, as a rule, anything that needs to be done often, there's a specialized Excel command to do it. It's worthwhile to see that there's a specialized command to do it, and then realize that unless you're doing that kind of problem every day, it's simpler to use the generic method and not get confused by what's the exact format of the command. Example one, I'm going to look at a big and tall shop. I want to open a big and tall shop in the area. This is a clothing store that specializes in tall men. I think there are 100,000 men in the region. The average height of a man is 5 foot 10. The standard deviation is 3 inches. I'm interested in how many men are there between 6 and 7 feet tall. I want to sell to those people, and I want to know, do I have enough customers to make my store worthwhile? I'm going to set up the problem. I have a total population. I'm going to do 200 subintervals. I want it to go from 72 inches, that's 6 feet, to 84 inches, that's 7 feet. With 200 subintervals, I'm going to look at my top minus my bottom divided by my number of intervals. This looks like things we've done before. The difference is I'm going to convert the Z scores. That was mentioned earlier. My mean is 70. My standard deviation is 3, so my lower bound becomes the lower bound minus the mean. How many inches are you above or below the mean? Divided by the standard deviation. The upper bound is converted in the same kind of way. Delta x is delta, except instead of inches, I want standard deviations. So that if I look instead of the formulas, if I'm going from 72 inches to 84 inches, that means I'm going from two-thirds of a standard deviation above the mean to four and two-thirds standard deviations above the mean. And my delta x is in inches, 0.06 inches. When I turn that into standard deviations, it's 0.02 standard deviations. I then am setting up my problem to integrate from my lower bound to my upper bound doing everything in standard deviations. My midpoint is going to be my starting point in terms of standard deviations. My number of intervals times the size of a delta x, except I'm backing off by a half because I want the midpoint rule. I then have an expression for f of that value. My area is like we've been doing before, the height, which was what I computed in column c, times the width, which is my width in terms of standard deviation. That will give me an area. I'm going to add it up. What I initially have is area in terms of percentage of the population. So this is going to be a number between 0 and 1. And then I want to convert my answer back into population. So if I said 12% of the population, I need to convert that back into how many people because I'm really interested in do I have enough customers to make my business worthwhile. So this is a setup that gives me the standard answer. I look at it without the formulas, and I find that of my men, 
approximately 25%, about one in four men, are going to be between six feet tall and seven feet tall. If my population was 100,000, that means I have 25,000 potential customers. I have to decide, can I run my shop profitably with 25,000 potential customers? The second way to do this problem is to use the specialized Excel commands, and I can either use it with a normal distribution or a standard normal distribution. The normalized distribution, I need to give it my mean, my standard deviation, my value, and I want the area from zero up to there, I'm accumulating. If I'm using the normal standard distribution, then I simply need to know a z-score because all of the rest are filled in. So there's an area to the lower bound, an area to the upper bound. The area I want is the difference. The population, I take the percentage that I got previously multiplied by the population. We notice in both of these, I get the same value. This is a more efficient way of doing the problem. What I normally tell students, though, is I find they will get confused on the syntax of those commands because they're not commands we use all the time. And so that generally it's more effective to just do the brute force method of do Riemann sums and add them up. Thank you.